Y'all get ready. Yes, you get ready. Latest news in the streets. Join us, sentiment for the tea. Breaking news with integrity. So, sir, your friends and your family. It's the lovely TV show. Bringing you good tea and good vibes. It's the lovely TV show. Be sure to share, like, and subscribe. Hey, tea sippers, I hope you guys are doing good. So, as we all know, Monique was on Club Shay Shay today, and her interviews, her snippets are all going viral. And I just found out a bit ago that D.L. Hughley has responded back to Monique and he's not feeling what she had to say on the show. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and play the video of Monique talking to Shannon Sharp and then we will watch D.L.'s reaction together. I mean, baby, we having a great time. We going for it back and forth. When we get to the end of the show, they say, Monique, you want to play a game? Well, I want to play. I said, sure, sugar. Let's play a game. And it's a game called Would You Rather. Oh. Okay? Now. Mona, you already, you should have said I'm too old for this game. Wait a minute. We're having fun, baby. <laughs> right? We're having a good time, okay. Shannon. Okay. okay? We, I mean, it's the sister there and it's two other guys. We're having a great time. It's okay. a beautiful black unity cookout. Okay. We're having a good time. Okay. Would you say your wife was your family? Is that considered family? Yeah. So your husband is considered family, Absolutely. right? Absolutely. Okay. So here we go. They said, Monique, we want to play a game of would you rather. Let's go. Would you rather your husband sleep with Lee Daniels with a condom or Corinne Steffens without one? What kind of question is really, that? Really, Monique? Now, as y'all are watching right now who haven't heard this story, y'all going, huh, they doing the same thing in the studio. They going, huh, okay. That is exactly what happened. Now, I said to the team, how does that uplift our community? I said, sister, and her name is Jasmine, how could you ask another sister that? Well, we just planned. I said, tell me the joke in that because I don't know what you're insinuating. Then you're involving people that have nothing to do with nothing. Like, what are y'all doing? So I said, I'm going to call my brother. DL. I'm going to call my brother. I call DL Hughley on the phone. I say, hey, baby. Yeah. Huh? That's how he responds. Yeah. Did he know it was you? Yes, he, because they called him to tell him, no, Monique's going to be calling. Right. Like this, it was getting crazy. Right. I'm like, just let me get on the phone with my brother. Right. Yeah. Hey, DL. Yeah. I said, listen, I just got off the phone with your team and they wanted to play this game. Would you rather? And it was like stupid. Like ask me about my husband and Lee Daniels and Corinne Steffens and his exact words. Well, that's how we do it. I said, DL, how does that uplift our community? And again, I don't know what y'all trying to insinuate, but brother, what you doing? Like I said, that's just how we do it. So it is what it is. Now, it got so ugly that my attorney had to send a cease and desist. So it never aired. So we have like when Cat Williams talk and people truth tellers talk, we have receipts to everything we're saying. That's how that whole thing got started. Okay. It's family. My husband is my family. Yeah. Now, you babies that are really good with this internet, through the years, I've watched DL speak ill of me. Through the years. I never knew me. I never knew DL Hughley had a problem with me. But when Cass said they all a group, he forgot to put DL Hughley in the group. Mm -hmm. Through the years, I was bitter. I was dangerous with what I was doing, saying that it was inequality. My husband didn't know what he was doing. This went on through the years. I was unloved, all of these things. And I said to myself, I'm going to see you. Mm -mm. I'm going to see you. I didn't go on nobody's show. I didn't say nothing to nobody, but I knew the time would come that I would see him. We were scheduled to do a show in Los Angeles. I was the headliner of that show. His name was on it. Then his name came off. I didn't question it, but I knew I'm going to see him. Mm. Right? Eventually. Okay. Now we have a show in Detroit. Contractually, I was the headliner. D.L. Hughley posted a memo. Now, when you signed your deal for the Ravens, did you sign a contract or a memorandum? I signed a contract. You see how you say that? 
like anybody that knows good business, you signed the memo was saying this is what I would like. Right. But the contract is saying this is what, what it, it is. is. OK. Yes. He put out a memo to our community and that touched me a little different because I was saying, why would you lie to our babies? Because now they're thinking if they send somebody a memo, that's what they're supposed to get. Mm -hmm. OK. I was contractually signed to go as the headline. Right. You mean you go last. D.O. Hughley didn't come into the building until 930. Now, contractually, I said I have to be on stage by 930 because if the show starts at eight, I refuse to keep an audience waiting. Right. That is disrespectful to the Co audience. Correct. When I went out on that stage, Shannon, I made sure everything I said, he heard me because now you're here and I'm going to say it to you. Mm -hmm. And I said some things on that stage that I said he was cowardly. And some folks said, how could you say that? How could you do that? And then I posted some things to say, this is what I meant. See, you came after my husband. And when you had a chance to fix it, when you had a chance to say, Mo, my bad, you know, right. we don't even right. get down like that. Right. You told me it is what it is. And until he's brave enough and courageous enough to say, this is what really happened, y'all. Y'all have never known me to be no shit starter. Folks ain't never known me to go over and kick a sandwich out of somebody's hand that's hungry. But what people do know is if you kick me, damn if I ain't going to kick you back. Right. Because that's fair play. Right. So there was one left out the pack. And when you have people that continually don't take accountability, that's why you see us in the state of affairs we're in. I'm a firm believer, Mo, that everybody don't. All right. So you guys just heard what Monique had to say about her interaction with D.L. Hughley and where the beef stems from. So now D.L. Hughley, he took to social media today and he went on a rant where basically he drugged Monique. I have not listened to his rant, so I'm going to listen to it with you guys right now. Shay Shay is getting messier and messier. Uh, it's almost like Wendy Williams didn't go anywhere. She just got a weight set. Um, and so Monique was on. Every time I see Monique these days, she's on uh, doing some greasy ass video with her and her daddy complaining about something or working out. I don't know nobody that work out that much and gain weight unless every crunch you do has got captain in front of it. But apparently she goes on Club Shay Shay and tells the story about how she came on my radio show and I wasn't there at the time. And uh, uh, my co-host, Jasmine Sanders, played a game that we played all the time with everybody called Would You Rather. She apparently was so offended by that that she said she got off. She called me. Monique did. And she said I was very dismissive. Like, huh? Monique's a liar. When Monique did call me, I heard her, her complaints. I listened to her and I pulled the segment. So if I had been as dismissive as she alleges I was, that segment would have aired. It didn't because I respected her wishes. She's a liar. It's, it's also befuddles the shit out of me how somebody who has a comedian talks as much shit about everybody else as she does. She has the temerity to be offended about anything as much shit as you say about people. Then she encouraged everybody. Uh, allegedly, it stems from the fact that I used to always talk shit about her on video after video. And she encouraged her sweet babies to look at the video and find them. Do that. Do exactly what she says. And you know what you're not going to find? You're not going to find any evidence of that because Monique is a fucking liar. She's lying about that. But what you will find is Monique talking shit about some uh, uh, alleged contract dispute we had. Look at the ticket. It says D.L. Hughley, then Monique. She knows the story. But what she did in response to that, she talked about my dog, my wife. This broad even brought out my daughter's personal trauma. My, my, my daughter, daughter was. Damn, he called her a bride. You know, it's real when you're calling a female a bride. Child. My daughter was molested and Monique bought that shit out and, t and told the world that I allowed my daughter to be raped in front of me. The lying motherfucker. She knows she was lying. And it only stopped when everybody from my family checked her. It's interesting. You know what else you won't see Monique doing? You won't ever see a, her with her family. Videos with her children or grandchildren. Because nobody fucks with me. How do you have sweet babies when your own babies don't fuck with you? How do, how do you love us for real when there's no evidence of anybody loving you for real? Except your daddy, who you apparently have to pay. And FYI, daughters are paid for by daddies. Not daddies who get paid by their daughters. You will you know what else you won't see Monique doing? Telling jokes. Monique, uh, if she'd have spent as much time 
actually writing jokes and writing her Netflix special as she did complaining about not having one, it wouldn't have been trash. It got the wor worst reviews of any Netflix special in history because that's what Monique does. She complains and she has grievances. You never see her being a human being. You never see her being sweet and warm to people, except when she's using it to butter somebody up to get something. There's a reason why everywhere she go, shit starts. Everywhere she goes. How is it that nobody fucks with you? Not even your family. How do you? Or oh, I was on the road getting it. I get it every goddamn week. Look at my schedule versus yours. See how much I'm going. And I still manage to have a relationship that I cherish with my children. Can you say the same? You can't. Because all you do is talk about your grievances and who did you wrong. There's a reason you fought by yourself. There's a reason you got to pay a man to love you. It's sad. There's an old adage that says you can't buy love. It's a shame, Monique, that you probably always will have to. Okay, I wasn't ready for that. DL wanted all the smoke. Wow. Whew. When I tell you this, this comedy community got more beef in it than rappers. There is more beef going on with comedians than these hip hop heads out there. Like it is insane. And at this point, I know for certain that the comedy community is messier than loving hip hop. Okay. So this entire situation is just crazy. Um, you know, like I said, Monique has her side and, you know, she's telling her story. But I also know DL has his side as well. Now, this is why Tyrese ass is running around social media talking about he wants to be Latina because we just keep beefing in the damn black community. But now the whole situation is crazy because I do remember when Monique went on stage. I did a video about it. I believe it was like a year or two ago. And she went on stage. She went in on DL and then also drugged the dog, drugged the daughter. It was a mess. Let me say it again. The head liner. That's what the motherfucking contract says. Monique is to be the last motherfucking person on the goddamn stage. She is the headliner. That's what I signed the fuck up for. I'm 30 plus years in this motherfucking business and I don't open for no goddamn body. The contract said the headliner. The contract said the headliner. The contract said the headliner. But a nigga named D.L. Hughley turned into a bitch and said I won't perform if she does that. Won't go out if she does that. Nigga, you open for the kings of comedy. I close for the queens of comedy, nigga. So when I leave this motherfucker, the headliner has left. I don't fuck with nobody. Sure. I don't fuck with no motherfucking body. But when you cross the line with me, nigga, you have crossed the motherfucking line. And that bitch, nigga, has crossed the motherfucking line. See, we got a history, nigga. We got a history. That nigga went on a tour talking about all Monique wasn't. You can Google it right now. D.L. Hughley on Monique, all I wasn't, what I wasn't worth, all of this bullshit. And nigga, you put your feet under my motherfucking table. So you came to my home, nigga, and you put your feet under my motherfucking table. I don't get down like that, goddammit. You got a bitch wrong. You talk about Young Thug and cause of their names. Nigga, your name is DL. What the fuck does it stand for? Yeah. How far you bending over, nigga, on the DL? You fuck with the wrong one? And DL went back to his radio station. He went in on Monique. You do all the time. Who calls Netflix and thinks I can get $10 million because I did the Queens of Comedy? Who thinks you can get on stage and still live off that? I was a king of comedy. You never hear me talking about it because in this business, like any other, it isn't what you have done is what you do. That that show was what I signed on to do. I made the quintessential mistake, the horrible mistake that like Tyler Perry, like Lee Daniels, like Oprah, like all these people of saying yes to you. And it is an occupational hazard. It is my fault. I have learned my lesson. You didn't just and the thing that bothers me the most isn't the things that you said, because I know who I am and I know what I do. And I have a pristine reputation. And everybody who knows me know what, I, what, what I'm about. It's this whole, my dear, my babies, I love you for real, which is so transparently false, it is ridiculous. But the thing that, that was really the most annoying, the thing that was really the most bothersome, is after a, a, a terrible couple of weeks where people were being slain in Buffalo, where people were being slain, kids were getting slain in school, and people had come to a comedy show to get away from all of their problems, you besieged them with yours. 
The one contract that isn't in dispute is the one that the audience had with us to entertain them. But every single time, more and more, you spend half of your time talking about your grievances and what you didn't get and who did this to you. Listen, when you burn things up and you sit back to watch the results of them, she's literally set that stage on fire, said the most incendiary things ever, and I had to go on stage. If she has the temerity to call me a coward, a coward would have left. A coward would have said, I can't go. You didn't even want to go on when you had a, a contract that you knew that not to be true. You made up this whole narrative that you knew not to be true, and you played that out in front of the audience. And then I had to go on behind you. And you know what you did? You sat back and you tried to watch your damage. You set the stage on fire and you watched what you've done. You know who does that? Arsonists do that. Arsonists set shit on fire and try to see the damage it drops. But I, I blame myself because I know now what I didn't before. Saying yes to you is an occupational hazard. One I will not repeat. I don't blame you. I wish you well. But when you do the things you do, when everything's about you, when you're vitriolic, when you have all these fights with all of these entities, it is you. Precious was not a movie. Precious was an autobiography. That is who you are, literally. You you mad at the contract you and daddy wrote? Your daddy? And I don't know why you call a man daddy and you pay for him. That's a son. Let's be clear. I am not angry with you. I'm angry with me. I did what I knew not to be true. But I'm going to tell you something. When you burn and you destroy and you wreck, you are not a queen of comedy. You're a queen of ashes. Now, while you, I'm going to go back to work and you get back to your kingdom of smoke. That's a little note from the GED section. We've got the Jazz Report coming up in 15 minutes. It's the D.L. Hughley Show. I'm D.L.'s daughter, winning on Monique, and I did not agree with Monique on that stance. I don't think D.L.'s daughter had anything to do with it. Her molestation, her abuse, that was something for her and her family to deal with. That wasn't something that Monique should have brought up, especially she didn't know the context. But DL himself has admitted that when his daughter came to him and said that she was being touched and molested on by a family friend, he didn't believe her right away. And that's a guilt that he's always gonna have to live with. Now, I will say this, I see a lot of people saying, well, it's funny that DL can come out against Monique in less than you know two, three hours, but when it was Cat Williams, it was crickets. Y'all gotta remember, I literally watched that Cat William interview like at least six times. Don't judge me. It was a good interview. But during that interview, Cat William said there will be no DL slander, meaning he respects DL, he's cool with DL, and he doesn't see DL on the same level as a gatekeeper like, you know, Steve Harvey and Cedric the Entertainer and things like that. So there was nothing for DL to respond to because Cat never caught him to the carpet. I think if Kat would have caught him to the carpet, I don't think DL would have had a problem responding because all the other guys did end up responding to Cat Williams. Even Steve Harvey in a roundabout way, you know, said some things to Cat Williams as well. But that is why DL did not respond to Cat Williams. He does, in my opinion, have the right to respond to Monique because once again, Monique brought up his name. So he's responding to her. But, you know, the low bra attacks, the attacks on her weight and saying, you know, the only crunch she knows is Captain Crunch. You know, that was a funny joke. I wasn't expecting that. But he kind of like went in so much on her physical appearance as opposed to just addressing the topic. But again, you can't tell people how to react to something. You know what I'm saying? When you hit somebody, you can't then dictate how they hit you back or how they respond to a situation. So I think this entire situation with Monique and DL may get messier, okay? 2024 and Club Shay Shay is literally the gift that keeps on giving. So let's go ahead and get the discussion popping. I want to hear y'all's comments. I want to read y'all's comments down below. Let me know what you guys think about this entire situation concerning what Monique said and DL's response to her. Whose side are you on? Who do you believe? So make sure you guys leave a comment. Don't forget to hit the like button. Feel free to share the video. And most importantly, make sure you still subscribe to the channel. And I'll talk to y'all later. Deuces. If you want the latest news in the streets, join us and tune in for the tea. Breaking news with integrity, so tell your friends and your family. It's the Lovely Tea TV Show, bringing you good tea and good vibes. It's the Lovely Tea TV Show, be sure to share, like, and subscribe.